Okay, I thought I would make a quick video showing the tune-up procedure for uh, a tube amplifier. In this case, it's an Ameritron AL811H. Uh, but the same procedure applies to a uh, majority of the tube amplifiers out there. I was I was trying to find a, a video on YouTube of, of this tune-up procedure to share with a friend. and uh, There's a few out there, but I couldn't find one that quite explained it uh, the way that I thought best. So I thought I would just make my own video showing it. And, uh, hopefully this will help some people out. Um, so to start with, I'm using an ICOM 7100 and I have it set on the 10 meter calling frequency right now in the AM mode and uh, I have the RF power turned all the way up which uh, in this case on this radio is 40 watts which is a suitable drive level for this amplifier. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that high. I've done it sometimes as low as 20 watts to start out with uh, but when you finish tuning you do want to be tuning with at least 40 to 60 watts into it because the amp will load differently depending on the amount of drive level you put into it so uh, if you don't want to run it at full power you still want to tune it at full power uh, for example you'd put in the 40 to 60 watts and tune it for max output and then you would back your drive level down versus setting your drive level low and tuning up the amplifier in that fashion um, so first it's important to make sure your band switch is set in the right position uh, and for example right now I have it in the 15 and 17 meter band position even though I'm on the 10 meter band and I just want to show what happens there. Uh, now of course we get the power switch on we make sure that we're in the operate position and then uh, for the meter I set it to plate current uh, the, you can check your high voltage but uh, typically I just leave it in the plate current position Looks like my switch must be a little dirty. Uh, so if you don't have this band switch set in the right position, when you key up, you're going to see the meters barely move. Okay, uh, so if you if you watch the uh, plate current and the grid current here, you see I key up and they only move a little bit. And no matter where I tune these knobs, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference not doing anything at all because I'm in the wrong band position. Uh, so if you run into that, that's one thing to check. Make sure that you are in the correct position. Uh, so I'll switch it to the aux, which is for 10 meters, uh, or 10 and 12 meters. This amplifier has had the modification done. So the first thing I'm going to do when I key up is I want to tune the plate and then I'll go to the load and then you go back and forth usually two or three times back and forth is all it takes uh, to get the amplifier tuned up and while I'm tuning the plate I want to watch the power meter for uh, uh, the peak wattage now right now I have the power meter set in uh, in a low power mode but I'll put it in high power and uh, on this particular one that goes up to 2000 watts so I'm going to key up and while it's keyed up I'll tune the plate for maximum power and then I'll unkey uh, wait a, uh, about five seconds and then I'll do it again for the load. You only want to key up for about five seconds at a time uh, while you're doing this and then unkey for a few seconds then key up again and uh, this way it prevents the tubes from getting overloaded while you're tuning. Okay so I'll key up and now watching this I'm going to tune for max power I must have the load uh, here. I'm going to unkey for a second. I must have the load too far off that it's not even. Um, it's not tuning. Let's see here. There we go. So we see a, a little bit of a peak there. I'm going back and forth, and you can see it peaking. So right where it peaks, I'll stop. I'm going to unkey for a few seconds. Uh, I should add you also if you have a peak reading meter, you want it in the not peak reading mode you put in average because uh, like a meter like this when you put it in peak reading it switches in a capacitor and it, it basically slows down the response of the scale and you want the re response to be fast. So now I'm going to key it up again and this time I'll tune the load for max power. Yeah, it's right about there. It's only a small movement in the needle. I hope the camera's picking that up. Now wait a few seconds then I'm going to do it again with the plate. out there and then the load again and so you just keep going back and forth and on uh, on some bands it's going to be a little more 
touching ours, but you can see it slowly it's creeping up. And now something I didn't do also is I didn't use the defaults in the manual. I'm going to key for a few seconds now. Um, that's that's the faster way to get it right right away is if you look in your manual, it'll tell you uh, depending on the band that you're on which uh, where to kind of start off with these. So I'm going to key up here again. Let's tune the plate to peek it out. Then the load. I think I'm probably actually about to the max for this. Yeah. Okay, so according to that meter, we're showing just under 400 watts. Um, now keep in mind, we're not driving it with the full uh, full power it can handle. We're only putting 40 watts in, and to get full output on these, you're looking at around 65 watts, uh, give or take a little bit. So what I will sometimes do then um, is I'll switch to FM mode. Because uh, in most HF rigs, the FM will go up to 100 watts, and then I'll just turn the power down appropriately. Uh, so on here, on here I'm going to set it to 50, which actually usually produces a very good drive into the amplifier on FM. And if we, uh, if I bypass the amp temporarily, put this to low power, we'll see on here that's that's about 50 watts. Okay. So we'll turn the amplifier back on, and I'll, I'll go back to doing the, the plate and unload tune-up procedure again. Uh, you'll see we'll get a little bit more out of it. And one thing if uh, I'll show you here, if you watch the grid current when I key up, and you see how high the grid current is, uh, high grid current means you need to increase your load. So I'll key up, and as I turn my load, you see the grid current come down. And right about there is where the power is, is the most and the grid current has come down some. And then I'll go to the plate again and peak that. And then the grid once more. So that, that's about going to be the max on here. Um, this is not a true peak reading meter and I'll show you the difference here in a second. So a, a lot of you people probably don't have a true peak reading meter. Um, they're not particularly common out there. Uh, a lot of people just use whatever they have on their antenna tuner or or a you know, standalone meter. Uh, but this one I have up here from MFJ, it's the MFJ891. And it's also the same meter as marketed by, I think, like Jetstream or something it's called. Uh, this actually has a true peak reading circuit, an active circuit. It has to be powered for the, the peak reading to work. Uh, so if I, if I flip it to average here and I key up, you're going to see on, on there it's showing about 600. Now this other meter down here, this MFJ, is showing about 400. I don't know which one is actually uh, calibrated correctly. I've had some, some doubts on this one before. I know it's kind of a generous meter. Uh, but just to show you, I'm going to switch to the sideband here, and just to give you an example of, of the difference between looking at it on a peak reading meter versus uh, a non-peak reading meter. So I've switched my radio back to sideband. I'm going to increase it to 65% power, which should be around 65 watts. And uh, I'm just going to talk into it. And watch the meter on top here as I talk. Testing one two. This is America Bravo Nine Tango Echo. Okay, you could see on there it was peaking around. It looked like maybe 400 watts. Now if I switch it to the true peak reading, this is America Bravo Nine Tango Echo testing. And there you can see it's it actually was reading about a thousand. I, I I doubt that is actually accurate. It, it should be probably closer to around 800, but. Uh, nonetheless, you get the idea that uh, on a true peak reading meter, you're going to actually see the closer to the 800 watts peak that the amplifier is advertised as having. Uh, whereas if you're looking at it on a regular meter, it's, it's not going to show that much. Uh, so for example, if I come back down to this one, and I have it in the peak reading mode now, you'll see on here it's not going to go quite that high. This is America Bravo 9 Tango Echo testing. So on there, it's showing about 450. Uh, it's just, just a difference in meters, but that's what you can expect uh, to see on your meter out of this amplifier. Okay, I hope that helps. If there's any questions, let me know.